Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Astrological Intentions. I am your host, Alex Reevy, along with the perfect patient herself, <laughs> Sandy Reevy. Say hi. Hi, everybody. How are you doing today? It is episode 197, May 1st. Let's get right into it. In the transits, we have a big week starting with Monday, May 2nd, Venus Ingress Aries. Going after what you desire. And Tuesday, May 3rd, Jupiter Sextile Pluto. My favorite day, a regenerative yes. Wednesday, May 4th, Mars Sextile Uranus. Move accordingly. Thursday, May 5th, Sun Conjunct Uranus. Be your own rebel. Friday, May 6th, Mercury Sextile Venus. Don't trip over your feet. And Saturday, May 7th, Sun Sextile Mars. Need training? So get some. Then the talisman time Sandy has finished up are all sold out, and we have one special upcoming. Then on the horizon, I want to re-announce that we have our May astrology forecast ready and waiting for you to watch now. And in our house, Sandy is going to share with us some household tricks for our spring cleaning. Stay tuned for this episode of Astrological Intentions. I say go do you. Now travel far, share your stories and earn your scars, it's you. Say you are the one you will answer to when this life is done. Don't waste a minute, jump in the river, wash yourself clean so you can deliver you. Hello, perfect patient. What does that mean, perfect patient, with all my medicines? <laughs> yes. Well, no, you've just been under the weather for a couple of days, and you're also a perfect patient because you're like hardly ever sick. <laughs> and you're pretty easy to take care of. Well, you've been helping me running and getting everything I needed and food and what, what, yeah, it, it was really strange. I drank something. I mean, I know what I drank. <laughs> right. But it burned my throat. It burned my throat up into my nostrils. Ouch. And um, I put four tablespoons in a small amount of water that was a particular brand of a colon cleanse mm -hmm. that my friend is like hey I'm doing this you want to try it and I'm like sure and I get the amount to put in but <laughs> it was not correct and when I took my first sip ouch I put in more than three times the amount I was supposed Ooh. to in a half amount of water out that I was supposed to very condensed so it went up into my nostril and took off the lining and weakened you and you know just kind of took off that you know protective membrane in the back of my throat and got really raw and then boom and actually it was interesting because I'm like what the hell was that I looked at the astrology and moon was making a conjunction to Pluto so it was like I I took poison <laughs> it really wasn't poison, but I over, I, I, it, it's, it's to cleanse the and system. And any, anything in that concentrated dose can be poisonous. And, um, and then I went about, you know, with, with throat lozenges and, you know, because it was just, everything was, I wasn't sick, but it was just sore. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of days later when the moon made the connection to the Mars is when I got sick. Mm -hmm. And. Um, it was like that, like the attack and I got so raw. I couldn't swallow. I couldn't swallow my own saliva. <laughs> um, I couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. I had to cancel all of my clients last most of the week, uh, which is, was quite a few. Um, anyway, I don't like sitting around, but I, it's all I could do. Right. I couldn't but, even sleep. But you did I good. Would, you did yeah. good. Cause I, I know that, you know, when you don't have work to get done or a project to finish or something that you're passionate about you need something and yeah. luckily there's at least like netflix and things to keep you entertained and um yeah and now you're starting to feel better yeah i'm feeling better and i can actually talk yes so it's good um, I also want to go direct to all of our listeners saying thank you so much for listening to this podcast. It really does mean a lot, especially when you send us our soul food, which are our reviews, our feedback, the emails, all of the above. So keep them coming. And I have one from an anonymous person. Hmm, let me see if I can figure that out. And this was from the Solar Return Report. Hmm. 
Uh, she says Sandy provides a very comprehensive solar return analysis, explains complicated information and visuals with clarity, and goes above and beyond expectations, providing a clear view of the year ahead. Plus, she's a delight to speak with and very optimistic. Oh, I like that. I do <laughs> feel like I am with the uh, Leo rising with Jupiter and Pluto on the ascendant. You're like, very seen right now. It's good. You know rev up little excitement rah 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 go team go go yeah you're a cheerleader you yeah um so let's move into the transits we start the week off with today it's a pretty condensed week <laughs> i mean there's something on that monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and then finally we rest on sunday <laughs> <laughs> um just like the bible says so um monday may 2nd venus ingress aries yeah, at, at 11.10 a.m., uh, these are all centrals, central times, going after what you desire. Is it like speed dating? Are you initiating some social encounters? Are you moving too fast in a new or a current relationship? Mm. Are you being a little assertive, you know, asking for what you want? Or are you being aggressive? Are you making sure you're getting what you want? So, you know, make your choice here. Um, you know, Venus is, goes from the previous sign where she's exalted in Pisces and this Monday, the second she moves into Aries. So she is not, this is her detriment. Mm. This is not a place where Venus can attract, right? Or, or receive. She now has to like man up, if you will, literally, because it's a masculine <laughs> sign. Right. And she is a female. She's a feminine. Um, but she has to man up and get things moving. She has to stir and go after what she what she really wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the next day is your favorite day, Tuesday, May 3rd, Jupiter sextile Pluto. I do like this. This is at 28 degrees, um, 5.30 p.m. This is a regenerative yes. That's my favorite day. Um, they're going to make one meeting. And it's within this, uh, well, they're going to come up again real close, but it's going to be within two degrees. But they're only going to have one part tile meeting. Uh, so we begin now. Surprise, opportunity to reach for some spiritual or religious um, findings. Um, it doesn't matter. It just it wants to achieve some great mystery. So dig in. It's my favorite day because it's, this uh, Jupiter is hitting my natal sun at tw um, 29 degrees of Pisces, which means Pluto is making a sextile to my sun. And and I really, really like this. Uh, I think this is be really be good for my my um, my vitality. You know, mm -hmm. sun is vitality and, and identity. And for me and for those that have Leo risings um, and have sun in Pisces, or this will bring that whole bodily uh, regenerative spirit. So the fact that I was pretty sick this past right. week, <laughs> by Tuesday the 3rd, I will really be able to handle what's in front of me um, as a huge week. I've right. I had a big week, and I've just dumped this past week onto this it's condensed week. and then I, I think that's for the Greece. theme yeah. the theme for you this yeah. the, and I'm packing and prepping for for my international travel mm -hmm. so anyway uh my favorite day the third yeah excited for that one and Wednesday May 4th Mars sextile Uranus yeah this is at um in the morning this is about 10 47 a.m move accordingly uh now Mars here is you know in Pisces making a sextile to Uranus and you know what are you moving toward move toward what is in front of you or what has replaced what was once in front of you there seems to be a change up you know Uranus is about change uh, mm -hmm. sporadic uh, spontaneous um, but if you can keep your eyes on that thing that's in front of you if we say keep your eyes on the ball mm-hmm Make sure that when it comes your way, you are swinging, you're in position, your elbows up, your helmet's on. Yeah. <laughs> you've got your bat, you know, you got, you're in, you're Locked in a good and loaded. stance. Yeah. And when the, when that comes through, you, you swing accordingly. 
Um, I really, I, I really like this aspect. It, like I said, it's not my, my favorite day of the month, but you may not see it coming, but be prepared in order to, to take action. Mm-hmm. So it's a sextile. It's going to help you. Yeah. yeah. And Thursday, May 5th, Sun conjunct Uranus. Right. Well, 2.22 a.m. This will be, I wonder if you'll have to wake up. Uh, maybe you won't be sleeping so much or so well. Um, this is be your own rebel. You know, stand up for yourself. Um, you may want to escape from set plans. You know, go your way today. Take off. Do something that is erratic, spontaneous. Again, f- using that energy from the day before. That batter, 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 batter. Swing now. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Um, it reminds me of that movie. What's that? Bueller's Day, Bueller's Day Off. Right? Oh, and yeah. And he Ferris, takes his Ferris friend's Bueller. dad's car and they all go down to a Cubs game or something. Yeah, in the parade. Uh, so here, this really is about um, es- escaping from what you already had planned. So if you have no plans on Thursday the 5th, maybe leave that day open so that you can be ready to swing um, and see where that ball heads. Mm-hmm. Um, it did happen. This happens once a year. And so it happened last year on April 30th. So just about five, six days uh, away. This was April 30th of 2021 when it, um, Sun in Uranus made a conjunction at 10 degrees of Taurus. And now it's at 14 degrees of Taurus. So check in if there's any similarities around this kind of early May period from last year's uh, late April, early May period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Friday, May 6th, Mercury sextile Venus. Yep. Don't trip over your feet. Again, this is at 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so let's break this down. Mercury is in his own sign of Gemini mm-hmm. and making a nice aspect to Venus. These are the two um, personal attendants to the personal sun. Attendants mm-hmm. to the sun. Um, and Venus is in Aries, so she's in detriment. She doesn't like being where she has to be forcibly asking for things where Mm -hmm. she normally just is, bats her eyes and receives them. (laughs) So Mercury is way stronger here. So there's this mental, um, there's your, your ideas may be mentally better than what Venus's actions, um, so you need to discover the options um, first before moving forward. Like, what are the options here? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can do this, this, or this. And if I put it into I do this first, then I do that second, and I do that third, this would be the outcome. Because if you can do that before Venus trying to move forward, and she's not real good uh, in Aries, but she's feeling pressured to get moving, mm-hmm. um, we don't want her to trip over her feet or step onto others. Okay. Yeah. And to <clears throat> to end up this week, to wrap up this week, Saturday, May 7th, Sun Sextile Mars. Yeah. This is need training. You know, this practice makes perfect. Perfect timing to figure out how to get something done. The sun is making a aspect, nice aspect to Mars. So it's this vitality, this movability. Mm-hmm. Even though Mars is still in Pisces, in a water sign, Mars has a nice, as, uh, nice uh, dignity in night charts. So this is really good for night charts. Night charts meaning people the sun that are born is under the horizon when the sun is below the horizon. Mm-hmm. So um, if you need to tweak something or need. Is there a, a training course you can sign up for? Is there something that you can redo? Maybe it's on your computer. Maybe it's something that you can um, recall to practice again, to do something again. Reignite it. That's, yeah. a, good, that's a good idea. And that's a wrap on our week. Mm-hmm. Let's move into talisman times where you have finished up all of your special Venus and Jupiter talismans. Holy moly. I was, up. And they're sold out. They're all sold out. They I, we pre sold them. Um, where we did the, we do this 
every so often. I don't know when we'll do it again. This it's year. usually when like a really big transit is coming up where you would have like back to back to back to back talismans, you know, universal talismans that you're making, but you you open it up to people to like pre-sale but we put much more emphasis on it and people get to pick exactly what patterns they want and the size b the pattern and they write their affirmation and so those all sold out all of them because it was the venus and jupiter and pisces Mm -hmm. um with the moon in pisces the, the moon was also in capricorn i got some of those um and there's still some coming up with uh the new moon uh, in Taurus, uh, shining, it's uh, uh, gathering the light from the very last degrees of the Venus Jupiter that's coming up this week that are also sold out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, to attract money, uh, to to attract and magnify all beauty, romance, and good fortune. That was the Venus talisman, and Jupiter was to magically increase wealth and good fortune. Um, there may be one that I made that wasn't uh, Mm pre-sold. It was a four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I think that's on the website. There is one. But yeah, they they were early because, you know, Pisces is coming up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Four four o'clock in the morning. So uh, that's that's probably another reason why I got attacked. Uh, (laughs) I've been up not much sleep this past week. Right, right. Um, but I do have one that's a Saturn, uh, Saturn talisman. I was actually going to ask you um, because these with these special talismans with the Venus and the Jupiter, I was going to say, I wonder if we'll ever have something like a Saturn kind of really getting disciplined type of talisman offer in the future. And it is. Okay. I've got one right now. Um, on Wednesday, May 4th, again, this is at two o'clock in the morning uh, because if Pisces comes up at, at four o'clock in the morning, we back that up a little bit, and Aquarius comes up at 2. Mm-hmm. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, we've got a very strong Saturn in his own sign, not retrograde yet, um, coming up over the horizon as the ruler of the chart. And the moon is in Gemini, coming from the 4th, which is an angle house, uh, making a really nice trine to Saturn. It's pretty strong. To adhere to my self-controlled plans. I hold myself accountable for my body, my health, and my routine. After this hard work, I am rewarded. It was so worth it. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that's a great space to be in. Kind of really feeling like everything that you've dedicated and persevered and, you know, created that self-control out of nowhere. Um, When you look back and you say, wow, that was so worth it. Right. Yeah. And I know a couple things I could use that for. So. Uh, if you're l- learning or wanting to um, say, "Hey, I've got, di- I've got, I'm disciplined. I'm, I'm asking Saturn to help me limit and control my my eating, or control my laziness, or control um, me sleeping in, or mm-hmm. ask Saturn to help you." Uh, and this is a perfect talisman for that to say, "I have a goal." But I have to get constricted here to get to this goal. I can't have everything, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to pull it in tight, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a corset. You know, we watch, you know, Bridgerton and all these, uh, Outlander or whatever. It's like that the corset gets really, really, really tight. You hold on to the bed, the bed post. And what? You get this really nice, you know tightened figure right in the center but you can't breathe <laughs> right you know girdles of her a thing of the past although what's the newest one that we bought for the wedding andrew's wedding oh, last year honey love honey love yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like this the new Spanx, where mm-hmm. it kind of holds tight and, and crisscrosses com- forms right yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but anyway those are those are <laughs> um so old-fashioned but so in fashion <laughs> right Um, Also, I want to announce here, too, our talisman of the month, Mm -hmm. which is to strengthen the mind and clarify the message. It is a really beautiful small bead talisman that is um, these really great cobalt blues and greens with a little bit of yellow in there, like a citrine yellow. Yeah, that's a Kazemi piece because we're going to have Kazemi this year or this month. Yeah. And so that mercury 
teaming up with the sun, really getting explosive, um, ignited. And in Gemini, at like one or zero degrees of Gemini. So it'll be like, and I'll talk about that when we get to that. But this is a really cool, cool uh, talisman of the month, which means it has a um, small discount. Mm -hmm. And free shipping. And free shipping. And there's one, I think, of them. Yes, only once a month. Um, So on the horizon, we just finished up our May astrology forecast that's available and ready to watch on our website if you head over to our blog posts. Also, the link is in the description. And we have our seven-day challenge. This is a free event that's starting May 14th through the 20th where we meet up every day at 10 a.m. Central for seven days, really igniting, really keeping an eye on our affirmations, our intentions, and living in that space for a whole entire week. And then also our Summer Solstice Constellation Bracelet Workshop is almost here. In one month, we will be starting our June 1st um, through July 13th. It is a month and a half long journey that goes really in depth to your chart. There's over four, there's 14 meetings that you'll be a part of, each one creating a bead for your intention bracelet, all coming together as if it were a constellation into this beautiful talisman. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. And then also don't forget our early bird for the 2023 Mexico retreat. I'll throw that in there too. Um, and don't forget that I am heading to Greece. Right. So I guess we're going to be doing a podcast from Greece. You will. Absolutely. Will it be the, will. No, it won't be the next, it won't be our next podcast, but it'll be the podcast after, after. that. We'll have to set that up and um, maybe I can be playing some Greek music in the background and share some uh, stories. Oh yeah. But I, what, when you just said, retreat the mexico retreat um i'm out there scouting a um greek uh, athens greece and then moving to some of the maybe one or two islands in greece so i'm out there i'm out there doing work (laughs) right 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 yeah but this is like the the easiest the fun easy part the the fun easy part that you don't normally allow yourself to do so. No, but all of the retreats that we've ever done, like we went to Bali uh, and scouted, uh, went to mm-hmm. Kasatara, um, scouted. Um, uh, well, I had already set it up, and then I went to scout, right? Uh, just because the those were the owners were my clients. They're like Sandy, you have to come here. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, scouting again. Scouting again. Um, so I think that leaves us into our house. Okay. And um, if any of you are on a similar schedule as us, um, the spring cleaning has been a little bit delayed. Well, A, because it's cold here. Right. It's still cold here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. And, you know, life sometimes gets in the way. But um, you had read this really awesome article that that had like something like 40 household tricks for spring cleaning and we loved them so we want to share some of them here on the podcast so and some of them are spring cleaning some are just household tips Mm -hmm. um did you know that if you run the cut end of an avocado under cool water it will prevent it from browning no idea but i do know about lime if you just squeeze a bunch of lime into avocado or if you keep the uh, seed in I have heard the that. pit in there, it keeps it. But I'm going to try this still. If, even if I keep that pit in, I'm only want half of an avocado. Mm-hmm. It just does seem that that, you know, if, with the seed in there, it gets a little brown. I want to try. So run the, the, the cut end, obviously, the green part. Right. Of it, of the avocado under cool water and see if it keeps it from browning. Um, I love that. Now, store trash bags on a roll under the sink to keep them accessible. On a roll? You know, kind of like a uh, paper towel roll. Yeah. You know how, and and you hang it up underneath your sink, like a paper towel yeah. holder. Uh-huh. But you hang it up underneath your sink, and you put your the rat the long 
um, roll of paper bags. Not yeah. paper bags, but plastic bags. Yes. And you just pull them off. Okay. That, but that they're like on a paper so towel. So are they like hanging with the ha- with their handles on Well, the they're roll? just all connected. So you just pull one off at a time. Oh. You know, like when you're plastic garbage bags. Oh, I'm I? thinking, I'm thinking of like they like takeout bags like doggy doo-doo bags not doggy oh. doo-doo bags <laughs> <laughs> like takeout bags you know the ones no. that like you're that i have them underneath my kitchen sink and there's just a bit bajillion of them and i yeah. don't know how to organize them but that's smart so like the garbage liner bags yes. okay all yes. right got you yes thank you for the other little trick here is to wrap your gifts with a pocket for holding the card. I've seen this. It's oh. so cool. I love it. Yeah. Um, there's there's so many YouTube videos that show how to do this. Really? And it holds your card there. And it looks so intentional and beautiful and clean, line, clean lined. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so practical. And you can also, it doesn't even nece- necessarily have to be the envelope. You could throw in like a little um spricket of rosemary oh, or yeah that's even a better idea you know something where it would jazz up whatever you're getting yeah, you just take your sheet of wrapping paper and like envelope it and then go ahead and wrap your thing and you've got a little tucked like kangaroo pouch mm-hmm. in the front and there's there's ones that will teach you how to do it with this like really pretty diagonal like if you're like wrapping a box there's like this it's like a file folder you know because it's got this diagonal mm-hmm. like a mi- diagonal line m- miter yeah so you, yeah it's pretty that's cool um tell me more store spools of ribbon on tiered pant hangers because <laughs> right so if you're ha- if you have yeah, a, if you like, have the space in a clo- in your well, closet it would be like your closet like your wrapping paper Station. closet <laughs> right i think i have one one spool of ribbon that's it and do you know about the uh, diy elastic shoelaces that you can put on little kids shoes are they like the coiled ones no okay no these are i remember those from the 90s there's no you don't tie them right you just they're oh they're kind they look like um like they could be some sort of like wire organizer kind of where like they're stretchy. Like yeah. it looks like a ha- elastic <laughs> hairband type of thing. Yeah. But then they like connect. Yeah. They're not my favorite. Kind of like the coiled shoelaces back in the 90s. Yeah. We never did those, do we? Uh, remove crayon marks from walls with baking soda. Okay. I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, organize measuring cups and spoons inside a cabinet drawer. I like that idea where it's just hanging inside a cabinet drawer and not in a drawer. Just like hanging in the, in the door. Yeah. And the door Uh opening up. Actually, Mimi does that. Your mom, my grandma, she has them hanging on. Yeah. But well, they have a picture here that shows like. Here's your one teaspoon, your half teaspoon, your quarter teaspoon. They're not all connected into a ring. Yeah, the rings can be problematic sometimes. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. And then you got to wash them all because otherwise you have to take them off. Yeah. This one I've never heard of. Use aluminum foil instead of dryer sheets. Mm, That sounds dangerous for some reason. So they're (laughs) saying to take your aluminum foil and make uh a couple sheets. You know, okay. Like, tear off some sheets. Tear off, tear off, and roll it into a ball, and put it in your dryer with your with your wet clothes, and you will get rid of static. Huh. Okay. Well, actually, I, I saw I saw um, someone using tin foil, not to dye their hair, but to get the static off of their hair. So oh, gotta, same thing then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of that, yeah. but I've never heard of this. Have you heard to store? Skein, skeins of yarn. What are, what's a skein of yarn? A skein of yarn. It's the big. Oh, where they're ball like folded. Of, yeah, where, you know, if you would uh-huh. ever 
crochet or knit, or like you would know. The thing that a kitten plays with is a skein of yarn. Yeah, but it's, sometimes it can either be a ball of yarn. You're thinking maybe of a ball of yarn. Uh -huh. A skein is where it's kind of like a... Uh, Figure eight. Yeah, infinity, okay. back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and yeah. it's a big kind of chunk, like a foot long. And so where are we storing You're these? storing those in an empty baby contain baby wipe container. Right, so that you're just pulling one. Th it's just automatically coming out of the yeah. The whatever There's prettier clean. things, though. Well, maybe you decorate it. <laughs> Who cares? Um, make make an. Do you know how to make goo gone? No, but that would be really helpful for me. Cause even goo gone, I don't even like goo gone, even though I ha I buy it. Um, you use oil, I'm guessing. Oil, vegetable oil, and baking soda. That's it? Yeah. It seems like baking soda is the ding, ding, ding. It is the ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I swear. I've been using it more and more. You can add it to your laundry. Um, if you put in a little bit of baking soda with vinegar in your, like, say, your bath towels, it actually helps get off a lot of the, like, calcium deposits that make your towels all, like, kind of itchy and hard um and really? it fluffs them up mm -hmm. oh listen to you yeah listen to me let's listen <laughs> um um i thought this was cool uh do, 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 do. you can shred chicken with this uh stand mixer oh you, so that's brilliant <laughs> oh my gosh right? shredded chicken is kind of a pain yeah, you just put it in there and it, turn it on and just and it just pulls it apart, shreds it. Yeah, but like my biggest fear would be like all of a sudden a big chicken breast just flies across the room <laughs> and hits the wall. This is cool. Keep your brown sugar soft with a. Wait, hold on. I know this. I I saw this. With uh, something we rarely have in the house, but I was itching for when I was sick. I a, asked you to go. A popsicle. Bye. <laughs> what? No, a uh, slice of bread. Ah, slice of bread. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It um, prevents it from hardening. Yeah. And that's all true. Of all, how do you, but how do you even, once it's hardened, how do you even use it? Because it is a rock. With an ice pick? <laughs> I don't have that. Um, and I don't have a microwave either. Yeah. So, hmm. Keep necklaces from tangling with drinking straws. That's smart. Put what one end. Although you like un untangling necklaces. Yeah, it's a weird, strange, fun thing for me. But <clears throat> yeah, I like this one. Uh, if you have toddlers, um, to put stickers in toddler shoes to have the have them match the shoes and which one goes on the right foot and which one goes on the left foot they show a a picture of a heart so if they have a you have a big heart mm -hmm. sticker and you cut the oh, heart cut it down in the, the middle. center uh -huh. that right the right mm -hmm. heart portion goes on the right shoe so when you put the shoes together you right. see the pattern and you figure right. out that's your right and that's your left. Right. Because also spatially, you know, as adults, we can flip over our shoes and understand which which side it needs to go on. But I think if you're looking through children's eyes and, you know, their spatial acknowledgement isn't necessarily Especially the same. Especially in a, in, a, in a playroom kind of school situation where there's um, a bunch of just shoes sitting over there against the wall and That's kids funny. might have the same kind of shoes. I could actually use this currently <laughs> because trying to get my boyfriend's shoes on, you know, we're kind of like face to face and I'm trying to get his shoe on. So I'm trying to, you know, figure out which foot is which. <laughs> so it would be helpful. Um, put a flashlight by the fuse box. Mm. Right. If the right lights when you go need out, it. right, lights go out. The first thing you do is check the fuse box, and that's perfect. You can you can't get, find your flashlight. There's even those like even if you could like hang up one of those little keychain flashlights mm -hmm. that's so small, yeah. tiny, 
and it would even fit in the fuse box. Mm. Not a bad idea. That's a good idea, I think. Um, stuff like cleaning windows with newspaper. I've heard yeah. that, but I've tried it, and it. I it's don't know if not it works. Helpful. No. Uh, she's got Martha Stewart has one here. Said organize the fridge with the turntable. And when I move, you do. I do. I use that all the time. I have kind of all kinds of roundy, roundy things going on in my refrigerator. Anyway, that's that's some of the ones that I wanted to. Yeah, those were cool. Um, bring up, yeah. Oh, also one thing that just kind of blew my mind was, you know, garbage bags. You yeah. know, like the garbage bag line or garbage bin liners. Um, they're when you take them out, they're actually inside out. Huh? So say that again. So the garbage, <laughs> the garbage bin liners, when you unravel it from the roll, all you have to do, you don't have to like open it up and then get some air in to flip it out the right way and then put it in the bin. All you have to do is take the, the opening, you know, as it's all folded in nice, you take the opening, open it and put it over the edge of the garbage bin. Then you take you know, what looks like now like a hat, you know, because you have like the the liner is above the garbage bin. You push that in and it works every time. No way. It's it has changed. I think I've scraped off like five minutes total <laughs> of since I figured out this little trick, you How'd know, because figure that out. I didn't teach you one that. of the, one of these little like household <laughs> trick oh, that's things. Cool. All right. So that is a wrap. Thank you, everybody, for listening in to this episode of Astrological Intentions. Remember, check out our podcast, share it with your friends, give us reviews on your wherever you listen to your podcasts. And remember, you can email me, alex at intentionbeats.com. Until next week, have a great week, everybody. I say go do you. Now travel far, share your stories and earn your scars, it's you. Say you are the one you will answer to when this life is done. Don't waste a minute, jump in the river. Wash yourself clean so you can deliver you. The story of you, the story of you. The story of you, the story of you.